Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the New Orleans Kings franchise as we just got done with All Star Break. Heading into the later parts of July as we get ready for the month of August. Now, the trade deadline is here. And really, the goal here is just to rebuild this team. We do not have a solidified roster. And a lot of older guys with bad contracts we will try to get rid of. First is Clay Buckholes. He's in his mid-30s. He's got four years on his deal. There's no reason to keep him around. He may be even doing decent for us. But I don't want to keep him there because what's the point of having an aging guy that's not even like in the 80s. So he's in the mid to low 70s. Not even worth keeping him. And then I look at Ross Adolf, who is a B potential prospect. We need to probably pair an older guy with a younger guy to at least get some good return on investment now. So let's look at some potential trade chips and some trade partners. And I'm going to start with Jace Vines. This guy is actually really good. He's in his mid-20s, 25 years old. B potential 74 overall in the Royals organization. Right now, if we traded for him, he would be our best rated pitcher on the roster in the whole organization, to be honest. And we did draft a couple of pitchers. I do need to add to more to that depth and just get some more guys that can potentially be a future part of the rotation. Now, I just look at, you know, other teams here. I'm looking at Ben Ruda, who plays for the Yankees organization. Another outfielder. We don't have much outfield depth. And one thing about uh, Adolph that we are trading right now is that he's kind of a low 60s guy, B potential. He's only 23 years old. But I kind of want a guy that's farther along right now because, like I said, we don't have much depth at the MLB level. I would rather have guys that are there quicker rather than guys we have to wait a few years for because I do want to develop some younger guys, obviously. But right now, we need the MLB help, and we don't really have that depth. Yasiel Puig is there, but he's hurt. And I'm honestly thinking about trading Yasiel Puig in the offseason. I guess we'll have to see what our team shapes up looking like. So I go back to Jace Vines, and I do decide to make that trade. Those two, two guys for Vines. So Vines automatically is one of the top pitchers in our organization right now. I'm going to start him off at probably double-A, maybe triple-A, and see how he does because I probably am going to move him up at some point this year. We need the help. Now, Danny Salazar is a decent pitcher, but just not doing well for us. He's on a one-year deal. There's no point of really keeping him. I mean, honestly, we if we can get something back for him, it's worth trading because we don't really have, you know, a spot on the team in the future for him. He's going to be a free agent anyway. It just makes too much sense to get rid of him. So looking at Brad Peacock, he's pretty good. I don't know if I want to trade him. We'll have to see. Brian Abreu is an A potential guy. He's 22 years old. He's having a really down year, but I don't want to give up on him right now. But then I go back to Brad Peacock and I see what I can get for him and Salazar. And they both have Brad Peacock, especially has a $4 million contract, I believe, for the next two years. Uh, but I just want to look at more depth. I mean, I need it. Matt Duffy is a really good player. I really like him on MLB The Show. He has great contact. And especially in this game in particular, I think that contact matters because of the different um, hits that they put in the game with the engine and everything and just different varieties of, you know, perfect contact and all that stuff. I think that Matt Duffy would be an um, amazing depth guy for us. So he is hurt right now, but we will agree to that trade. And like I said, we're shedding money while also getting a bit younger. And then I look at some more depth in our infield. And the reason why I made that trade is because I'm looking at Jack Mayfield and I just don't think he's a good fit for our MLB team. He has less than a year MLB experience. Yes, that's true. But I do want to add some more outfield depth. And I just got rid of Ross Adolph. And I do want to add, like I said, a guy that's younger, maybe progressed further along. So I look at DJ Peters from the Dodgers. He's 23 years old, same age as Adolph, B potential, and he's 69 overall. And one thing I like about him is that his progression with power versus left went up plus 10 this year. I mean, that is significant. So I did just acquire Matt Duffy. I think it just makes sense to uh, just get another prospect, maybe an outfield prospect because we don't have many. We have maybe a few that I can see possibly touching the MLB level within the next two years. 
not a lot after that. But I'm just looking at a guy like Justin Thompson here, who's in our organization at the AA level, hitting 270. He's had a great start to his minor league career. I'm going to move him up to AAA. Like I said, we don't have much depth. I just want to see how he does there. I don't think he's probably going to be moved up with the September call-ups, but I don't think this is his year yet. I think he's still a year away. I think next season is probably his year. And maybe you never know. He could progress a little bit more towards the end of this season and get to the low 70s and have a chance to make the opening day roster. So let's just check out our AAA team. And one guy I have not played with yet is Hoi Young Park, a guy who we traded for a couple of episodes ago from the Yankees. And he was kind of trapped behind Gleyber Torres, DJ LeMayhew, those guys in the infield. And I just want to check him out along with DJ Peters our new acquisition here at the deadline. Like I said, that power verse left is really, really intriguing. I don't have any power bats in the outfield at all in our entire organization. So let's just check out these guys in some at bats. Hoi Young Park is gonna go up to the plate. He hits in the two hole, he strikes out as that brings up DJ Peters. He's a big guy too. He stands about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, as he hits one to the left side and that's gonna be an easy pop up to the shortstop and let's see what Hoi Young Park can do in his second at bat. As he gets one low in the zone, he hits one up the middle and that one is going to sneak through. Now, Hoi Young Park definitely has a chance to be the opening day starting baseman, starting second baseman next year. As that brings up DJ Peters, he watches one low in the dirt. And like I said, Hoi Young Park, he has a ton of potential to me. He's a good fielder. He can hit the ball well. He's also a lefty um, and he has good speed. So I think that he is a legitimate uh, he has a legitimate candidate to be, like I said, the opening day second baseman next year. I actually looked up his MILB uh, stats and just his history. He actually used to play shortstop. So if it comes down to it, I might switch his primary position back to shortstop because maybe they changed it based on where he stood in the organization for the Yankees. But I think that he could possibly be a future shortstop. I guess you never know. But right now I'm going to keep him at second base. So now we move on to the seventh inning, and here is Hoi Young Park at the plate again, but he can't keep up with the heat as that brings up DJ Peters. Let's see if he can get a hit in this one. He hits one hard to the right side, but it is stopped, and it's going to be an out at first base. DJ Peters not having a great debut so far as that brings up Hoi Young Park for one more at bat here in the eighth inning. He hits one down the left field line. Will it get down? But no, it won't. It's going to be run down. And that one will do it here in this game. And I wasn't really overly impressed with Peters, but I mean, hey, what can you do? Uh, this guy is going to be pretty good for us. He's got a couple of years to develop. He's 69 overall. I definitely am banking on that to go up to maybe low 70s come next year. We'll have to see. But this game, I want to check out Jace Vines and another guy we just traded for. I want to see what he's like on the mound at the AAA level. That was just the AA level. Sorry if I said AAA earlier. But now we're at the AAA level. And I want to check out Justin Thompson's debut at AAA as well as Jace Vines takes the mound. And he has, I think, the tools to possibly be a one or two guy in our rotation. I think Rahelia Armenteros right now is the number one. And uh, Jose Arquiti is going to be there but i'm not sold on our i'm i'm not really sure if he's going to be a part of our future he's a potential he's got a ton of trade value so i guess we'll have to see how that goes with his progression but let's just see what jake jake vines has so here he is facing uh the iowa cubs here and they start out with two hits here in the first inning so vines already getting into a little bit of trouble here with guys on first and second with one out as he hits a chopper too short and we will turn the double play on this one and he does get out of this inning and I like to see that as far as getting in jams getting out of you know these jams is that brings up Justin Thompson to the plate remember it's his triple-a debut let's see what he can do here at the plate he hits one to third base just a little chopper the third baseman charges and throws it to first base and Thompson is 0 for 1 in his AAA debut. So let's go back to the mound. Let's check out Jace Vines as he is going to get a batter to swing and miss at an outside curveball way out of the zone. But way to get him to fish at that pitch. 
So now the Iowa Cubs have a man on second base here with one out here in the third. Let's see what Vines can do in these uh, situations as he does have a runner in scoring position. The next batter comes up, and it's going to be a fly ball to left field. And I'm not looking to, you know, have, you know, big strikeout numbers with this guy. I just want to see what he can do. I want to give him about five innings of work and see what he can do in his debut. So here comes Thompson up to the bat, up to plate in his second at bat, and he will beat that out for his first single of triple-A ball. He beats that one out, and that brings us to the top of the fourth inning. Vines in a little bit of trouble. Here's a deep shot off of the left field wall as Thompson does play this off of the wall. He's a good fielder. He doesn't have the greatest of arms, but we do come up throwing, and Kissinger way behind on that throw, and it's one-to-one -one here in the fourth inning. So Vines, here he is still on the mound. He's going to get a fly ball out to second base, and that is going to get us out of that fourth inning as we move on to the fifth. This will probably be his last inning of work, but here are the Iowa Cubs starting out with a hit to the left side. So now they got a guy on first base, no outs in the inning, as that brings up the next batter, Peralta. He hits one deep to left field, and that one has some carry. It's going to be gone. And Vines does give up a home run here. This is his last inning of work, and he get, gave a big fly up. So now it's 3-2 to two for the Cubs as this fifth inning does continue. Chopper back to the pitcher, and Vines throws to first base, and he gets the out. So now we move into the bottom of the sixth inning. Here is Jay Tomp at the plate. He's going to just ground out to short, and he is one for three so far as we move on to the ninth inning. Let's see what he can do in his final at bat. He gets another low pitch, but this one's a little bit out of the zone and we will swing and miss. And that one will be the end of this game as the Iowa Cubs do defeat us. And Vines didn't look too bad. I liked him what he did, but we did give up a lot of runs in this game. Six hits through five innings, five and a third to be exact. Two walks, three earned runs, three strikeouts. I mean, it's not terrible. It's not great either. But encouraging things being that he is B potential mid-20s, we will have our chances to develop him in the organization. Hopefully, sooner than later, he will get moved up to the MLB level and show what he can do. So now let's hop back over to the MLB level and let's just check out our MLB team. And you saw last episode, we kind of came back down to earth after winning a few games. One guy that's really come around is Clint Frazier. It seems like he's been the best guy we traded for so far as we've made, what, three, four trades at the MLB level so far. I think only three, actually. And it was David Bodie, Clint Frazier, and then I forgot who the third person was. I'm forgetting. I'm blanking on somebody right now. And then uh, Matt Duffy we just traded for as well. Oh, yeah. Uh Who's the first base that we just traded for? I can't even think of his name. Mike Ford. That's who we traded for. So here is Clint Frazier at the plate as he does face a really good pitcher this year. Lance Lynn is doing numbers for the Texas Rangers. He's got 10 pitches here in this inning. But here is David Bodie, one of our acquisitions, who's still hitting in the three hole. He hits one down the right field line. That one does touch the wall. And that one is a stand-up double here for Bodie as he, I believe, leads our team in doubles, as that brings up Mike Ford, who we were just talking about. And look at his average. It has dipped down to 208. Now, that is really sad because right now he is platooning, as that brings up Tim Beckham, and he hits one up the middle, and that one is right to Andrews. And that is an easy out at second. And let's just see who's going to be on the mound for us. It is Jose Urquidy, who we just got done talking about. Like I said, this is why I'm not sold on him. 3-10, and 10, a high whip, a high ERA. I mean, it's just not looking good here in this season. I can contribute that a little bit to the team's success and just morale bringing him down a little bit. But still, you got to deliver. And one thing I liked about Clay Buckholtz in, in particular is that he was still pitching decently even though we were losing. And Armenteros is actually getting uh, wins as well as that brings up uh, Kyle Tucker here in the third inning who hits a laser to right field. That one will get down out of the outstretched glove as that brings up Clint Frazier up to the plate. He hits a shallow pop fly to center field and the center fielder can't corral that one and they will actually rule this in error. I'm kind of mad at that. That, that should have been a single. 
So now that brings up David Bodie, who already has a double in this game. He hits one hard up the middle, and it's going to knock off the bag at second base, and that is going to be a hit. So now base is loaded here with one out here in the third inning. Here is Mike Ford, who he acquired from the Yankees. He hits one hard to the right side. It's knocked down by Odor and scooped up and tossed to first base for the second out of the inning, but we do get a run across the plate as that brings up Tim Beckham again with the opportunity with guys in scoring position, and he will swing and miss. Late fastball, late swing on the fastball as we move on to the sixth inning. Or Curdy is pitching pretty well. You can see there's a strikeout there, but back at the plate. We're striking out too, and that's going to be Martin at the plate. How about David Bodie? He strikes out on the inside knuckle curve as we move on to the ninth inning. Two outs here in the ninth. And there's a little dribble to third base, and we are going to come up throwing, and that is an out. Zach Cozart with the throw on the run. As this one moves on to extras here, 1-1 versus the Texas Rangers, a divisional opponent, as we will strike out by Le with Leones Martin on the high heat. That's going to bring up Garrett Stubbs. He can't get anything going as well. We're going to move this one on to the bottom of the 10th inning with one out. Here is Odor at the plate. And now we are getting into a little bit of trouble. They can walk it off here in this inning. One out, guy on first base, and up comes Robinson Chirinos, the catcher, as he hits one deep off of the center field wall. That one is going to ricochet, and we will field it perfectly, come up, throw into the cutoff, man. And look at this. They're setting the runner, and that is going to be an out at home. Odor tried to make it from first base, and that was a perfect throw that time from our man Martin off the wall. And then I believe that was Scooter who got him out at first base. And now two outs in the inning and we get the ground out here to Mike Ford as this one moves on to the 12th inning. So up comes Scooter Jeanette. Can our offense get going in this one? Not this time, another fly out to center field. Now the bottom of the 12th. Here is Odor, another strikeout. This one is going to 13 innings. So that's going to bring up Zach Cozart, who is 0 for 4 in this game. He finally hits one to the left side of the field. That one sneaks through. And now we got a man on first base here with one out. Drew Stubbs, the catcher. And he is going to watch one on the inside part of the plate. And that was a two-seamer, but we will draw the walk. So guys on first and second here. Kyle Tucker at the plate, who hangs one up there, and he delivers with the pop fly to center field. And that's an easy out. I thought he was going to crush that ball. But that brings up Clint Frazier. 0 for 5 in this game. We highlighted him doing well. He hits a pitch up in the zone. It's going to be driven deep. And let's see. It's got legs. It's going to be gone over the fence. There we go. Clint Frazier delivers. And like I said, he has been the rising star here for us this season, I think. And like I said, the Yankees were just trying to get rid of him. So I think we have made, made off pretty well with getting Clint Frazier, giving him an opportunity to start with us. And I really like what he's doing for us this season. So now we move on to the bottom of the 13th. Now we have two outs in the inning. And let's see if we can get out of this game. Pop fly to second base. But Scooter is going to miss that one. Ruled that one in error. This inning does continue as that brings up Joey Gallo, who is 0 for 5 in this game. And he watches one. That was close. And now base is loaded. We bring in Joe Smith, our quote-unquote closer. He's got 21 saves. He is doing amazing in the closer role for us. But now here is Danny Santana at the plate. 1 for 4 in this game. Base is loaded. He hits one hard up the middle. That one does skip to Leonis Martin who comes up throwing, he misjudged that ball just a little bit, and it alters the throw. And now it's a four to three game here versus the Texas Rangers. Now they have a chance to walk it off. Ronald Guzman at the plate. He swings and misses at a low sinker, and that one will get us out of this game with the victory. We avoid the scare, and we get the win here, four to three. One of our longest games of the year so far. We haven't had many extra inning games, obviously, because we're not good. I mean, we have not been in these games at all, really, this year. But we get the victory. 
so now we're sitting here at 40 and 61 towards the end of the month of july going into august and then september as well and like i said i think two moves that i think i'm going to make vines is going to get moved up to the mlb level i don't know if it's going to be next episode because next episode we will get to the month of probably pro i want to get through august to be honest i just want to see if we can do that and then maybe another move that we'll make is maybe Hoi Young Park will get his opportunity at the MLB level. I guess we'll have to see. I need to move him up to AAA first and see what he can do there. But I like those two guys, especially as part of the future. So that is going to do it here for this episode. I know you guys suggested guys I should go after, and I will still consider those guys. But in the offseason, I didn't want to make too many deadline moves, making it realistic. So hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.